Quite an emotive topic, this. A YouGov poll seen by GB News suggests a majority of the British public support a ban on the American XL bully dog. Yes, the poll comes after the government said that there were no plans to add the American bully XL breed to the list of banned dogs. Now, this breed is in the spotlight after being responsible for killing 11 people since 2021. And earlier we spoke to canine behaviouralist Jordan Shelley and an owner of the American bully XL, Basil, who he's had for around six months. I think it's very clear to me that there's a real issue around the breeding of these dogs, more so than the breed, and the types of people that are breeding them not taking into consideration um, health, uh, welfare, behaviour when they're breeding the dogs is the real issue. And I believe that if this type of dog is banned, the same people will simply just breed a different type. They'll move on to a dog of a slightly different shape that doesn't fit the criteria, um, and uh, that's what they'll breed instead. And the amount uh, that these dogs are going for is obscene, and, and it's an easy money for them by comparison to drugs. And, and I think that's what they've moved into. And they'll just move into the next breed after, the, after this, uh, um, and after these are banned. So I think it, it, we really need to look at restrictions of owners and how we can make sure owners are getting the right education and that there's things in place for early intervention. And I, I really believe that we should be moving towards an, an educational-based licensing system. So educating owners, that is uh, Jordan Shelley's solution. Mm -hmm. Well, joining us for more is GB News Investigates reporter Charlie Peters. Charlie, let's just delve into what you've found with mm -hmm. this polling? Sure. So the polling with YouGov, a sample of 2,000 people found a 57% support for adding this American Bully XL to the Dangerous Dogs Act list of bans. Um, only 17% opposed. When we split it by political parties, we found that voters for all major parties also supported the ban, with the Conservatives at the top 69% and Leave voters at 67%. Um, interestingly, we also found uh, significant support, 90% support for people finding owners criminally responsible for their dog's behaviour. As we heard from Jordan there, you know, putting owners at the emphasis of the issues, clearly the public recognising an, an, an ownership issue as well. It's interesting looking at the data because around half of dog attacks in the last two years have come from this one breed. And it's interesting because it's not a particularly widely held breed. Mm -hmm. There aren't that many of these dogs mm -hmm. in the UK, but they're accounting for a huge number of the attacks. Well, they're the, they're the attacks we know about in the media mm -hmm. that this are reported. Is, in terms of um, how the dog is handled and its overrepresentation, we know from Policing Minister Chris Phillip, who said last week that despite being a tiny fraction of the breeds in the country, they do represent about half of the dogs that the police pick up, not just on media reports, but the ones that there's a police intervention. But despite this, the Environment Minister, Lord Benyon, said in a written response in the House of Lords that they had no plans to intervene at this stage. It comes also as, as many Labour, uh, many Labour opposition MPs are calling for this breed to be added to that Dangerous Dogs Act, which was first introduced in 91. Specifically, they're focusing on the pit bull as an issue. Uh, but this, this, uh, this breed, the Bully XL, it is a, cr a pit bull cross. And so it has been allowed to be entered into the sort of the dog stock of England due to a bit of a, a loophole there through its mixed breeding. Mm. But, I mean, putting, putting the dogs on the, the dangerous dogs list, I think there's four on there at the moment, that's all to do with the look of the dog, how the dog looks. And there are plenty of dogs that look a certain way, but mm. it doesn't actually mean it's very vicious. And that opens up a whole other debate about whether, you know, th this breed-specific legislation is fair. So there's, it's, it's such a complicated topic mm. here, isn't it? Mm. Very, very complex. Lots of competing voices here between, you know, is it in the nature of the breed? Is it an ownership issue? But as we know, I, I, you know, as those discussions go on, we do know that lots of dogs and lots of people are being hurt by this breed. We've had 11 confirmed deaths since 2021, three more suspected, and the the tracking website Bully Watch Online. Yet yeah, last week they reported a different dog being killed by a Bully XL in Britain every single day for the week. So as the, as the debate rages on, there is a, a consensus at least that there is a problem going on with this breed. OK, Charlie, thank you. Well, we can speak now to animal behaviourist Hannah Molloy, who thinks 
Improving education and licensing are the most popular measures among experts. What, what do you think from what you heard there, there from Charlie and about this polling that's been done? Is there a problem with this breed of dog? I think the difficulty we have is that um, it isn't necessarily just the breed. I think we're boiling down a really big issue here. So when we did um, an event series in Parliament called the Dog Bite Reform uh, event series, we got the experts in who've been studying this issue for decades. And they said that actually we've been seeing a rise in dog aggression towards human beings for the last 20 years. And it's only really recently that the XL bully has become a kind of a sort of sexy dog to see in the media um, now don't get me wrong I think this dog is a very large dog it's imposing it is designed to be to look scary uh, but I think we really need to ask ourselves a better question uh, rather than should we ban the dog which is why do we want dogs who look this way uh, in the first place when we did a poll of all of the experts that came to our event series in Parliament we actually found of those who've been studying this issue for the last year and the experts who've been studying it for 20 20 years, uh, when it came to increasing BSL, that was really low on our poll. Uh, the top five solutions that came out of our uh, solutions event were the, to really look at regulating dog training. Again, as Jordan was saying, looking at regulating breeding, really stopping people from buying dogs on social media. It mm. is crazy how easy it is to get a dog on the internet. So mm. yeah, we really need to take this wonderful opportunity we have right now as a nation to, to improve responsible dog ownership mm. and not just look at this one dog. There are so many dogs who are getting attacked by other dogs that aren't just this breed. Should people, when looking for a dog for themselves or, or their family, also not just look at sort of how the dog looks, but what the type of dog's traits are, whether they're more docile or, or a propensity to be more active or even uh, more violent. What sort of information is there out there for people uh, looking for dogs and those breeds' traits? This is really sticky. So breeds, obviously, we, we understand that certain breeds are, have a propensity for a certain behaviour. Retrievers retrieve. That's what they do. Terriers, little dogs, we bred them to dispatch rodents. They just love doing it. If you give a terrier a squeaky toy, then they want to they want to shake it, you know. So there is a certain amount that we can tell from the breed of dog. But actually, within a breed, there is such a huge amount of variation, massive amount of variation. The breed is not a massively good indicator. So I could go to a Labrador breeder and say, I want, you know, a guide dog. Uh, please and guide dogs will say look we wouldn't have this complicated breeding program if it was as simple as Labradors are really good guide dogs okay so even within that breed there's so much variation when you're going shopping for a dog you really want to make sure that the parents are lovely meet mm. the parents are they kind are they shouting at you when you first come in the door are you even allowed to meet them are they kept in a separate room you know these are things we need to think about has that breeder done due diligence to make sure that those puppies have seen a whole range of things and are capable of bouncing back from stress mm. do they have toys around does it look like they've been taught how to share? Yeah. There's so much we need to do across the nation right now to improve this situation, and it is not just about the breeds. Really, really thorny issue there, not just breed, but also bloodline specifically and, and training there. Hannah, thank you so much for talking us through that, uh, that very complex topic and distilling it uh, as you have done.